Okay guys, welcome back. As you can see, we've got the E61 back in again, which is, I'm gonna to explain to you the reason why. When I scanned the code yesterday, a full code popped up, and you wouldn't believe this, after having the intake manifold off, doing all the CCV, full card decided to throw up a 2AAB full code. Now, I knew what the code was immediately um, for the variable intake system, because I suffered with this on my E60 and I had to change both of them. Luckily on this one, because it's a two, a two and a half liter engine, the M52B25, it only has one disavow. So it's right up here, and I'm gonna show you how to change it. Now, when these usually go, it causes the car to run very rough because the valve ain't, the flap ain't shutting, so letting excess air in when it's not meant to. And also, you'll lose your power in the mid, mid range, as this one is doing now. So you, when you're trying to go uphill and accelerate, you just feel like there's no power there. That's what it does. The valve actually shuts and then throws air through each cylinder, all three cylinders in turn. But obviously, this one ain't doing it because it's jammed, or I think the servo motor's failed because it don't run a self-diagnosis, and I believe the servo motor's failed. Now, that will be due to oil getting in the intake manifold and causing it to go through the seals and destroy the motor. We do have a new one on the way, so I'm gonna get this one out and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. And then what we'll be, what we'll be doing is when the other one comes, we'll be reinstalling that one. You lot will know how to do that, so I won't be showing you how to reinstall a new one because I believe that the video will take too long. So, in all fairness, I'll show you how to remove this one and show you what to look for when you take them out, how you know if they're faulty. And if they are, how to change them. Obviously, fitting it back is reversal, as what it is to come off, air filter box off, intake hose off and then all you can get to is straight away to disavow you do have to move the bracket for the two connectors which are just down here for the electronics and, and hook them from the bracket after that you'll gain easy access to the disavow there's four bolts remove them and the disavow will pull out with ease so let's crack on with it and we're back in a sec okay guys so as you can see i'm now on the engine so the first thing you're going to remove is the intake box obviously you know already the torques it's going to be a torque 25 take the bolts off then get your flathead screwdriver your six mil socket and undo the jubilee clamp which bolts the intake hose to the air box math sensor just pries it up and pull it push out once that's off then you want to get round here onto the jubilee clamp on the throttle body for the intake hose and you want to unbolt that one which is another six mil or you can use a flathead screwdriver but I prefer to use a socket because you can't get to that with a flathead screwdriver. After that, this will then come off. This bracket right here is what I was telling you about down here. This has to be pulled off and this bracket with the bolts here with the torques, I think they're torques 20. They need to be removed to get to the disa bolts which are all around here as you can see. We're gonna pull this disa out and check it and obviously then we'll know if it's actually failed and if the computer was right. So as you can see, so I'm gonna show you again as I've done this on videos already, you're showing you how to remove the air filter box and clean it. But obviously you just wanna remove these bolts down here as you can see one there and one here now we're going to take them off after that as i say then we're going to pull pull the air box up once it's released from the jubilee clamp which is right there now i do use a six mil socket just to release that and then prize it off a flathead screwdriver so obviously you lot get the drift on how to do it obviously the math sense is the same just put a screwdriver underneath the connector here and just push it back and it pulls, pulls, pulls pops straight off once that's off then i'm going to show you the next step which is to get to the back of that next hose to unbolt that from the throttle body so we're gonna carry on unbolting this one. Obviously, as I say, you lot know how to do it. So I'm not gonna record this in a video because I don't see it as any point. Okay guys, so obviously what you wanna do now is you wanna untake this intake um, boot off because obviously this is in the way of the disavow. Um, this is just an intake duct that they put up there. I don't know why they've done it, but obviously it is quite easy to get to. You don't usually have to remove the power steering reservoir. All you need to do is take these connectors off here to be able to get to the back of it, which you're gonna to have to take off anyway, so it's better to take them off now because they're just getting in the way otherwise. And obviously you can put your hand back back behind there and get to the throttle body boot. And do please remember when you put it back that you have to put it back straight because obviously you won't be able to tighten it otherwise. It is a bit of a nightmare of a, of a ratchet because as I say, depending on the extension, but I've got a hold of it now, which is right here. You will see it as, as you put your hand down, but it ain't easy to get to. So you've got to be careful when you're removing it. Okay, so now that's been unbolted. Now you can see, now we're just gonna pull that off and we're gonna move that out of the way. And now, as you can see, this is the disaffect flat bolt here, which is one, two, three, and four. There's the connector right there, which you need to get a flatted screwdriver and pries that out, which I believe I'm just gonna get. And now, as you can see, I'm just gonna pull the connector out like that, and that's out of the way. Now we're gonna unbolt them bolts after, but for now, we need to get out these bolts here we need to loosen these clamps for the connectors which are right here so i need to get another torx and release that so i'll be back in a sec okay so as you can see now i'm removing the bolts for the connector now all you have to do is release one of these and the other one just loosen it and the bolt the bracket will slide it down so you don't have to release them all you just have to loose take one out and then loosen the other one so the bracket flips down 
it is quite easy to do as I say it's not a hard job to do this job at all get some disaflaps it's just time consuming when you've got to be moving around and there's not much space because as you know you've got the heater control valve here which is gets in the way and you've got to be careful not to lose this bolt as well as these bolts are prone to get lost in the engine bay so we're going to put that up on the bay and now we're just going to loosen the next one which is right here we've cracked that one loosen it and as you can see the brackets already falling forward as i said to you once it falls forward you're just going to want to move it out the way like that as you can see you don't really want to be taking the whole bracket off as it's just a pain to put back on and line up the screws so it's easier just to loosen it like that and move it out the way now what you want to do is you want to start removing the bolts for the disavap so they'll be the same as them so you just crack them off like there and just crack on and just remove them all so and then you just remove them one half time so we'll back after we get all the bolts off and i'll show you how to get the disaflap out okay guys so all the bolts are out for the disavow so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the flatted screwdriver and all you're going to do is push on it as you can see just to release it with a flatted screw now as you can see this has got too much play in the disaflap already i can see it and it's stuck in the wrong position it should not be stuck there take it when this car's off when the engine's off and as you can see all the oil coming out of it right there this is covered in oil look at the oil on my finger and it shouldn't have that much oil it is covered in oil inside the disaflap well i'm gonna have to clean it out but as you can see this is failed due to oil getting inside now there should not be oil inside the cylinder and this is the whole reason it's failed now i'm just going to show you again this has got a lot of play in it it should not have no play this flap should be shut when the car's off um, and it opens when the car is on so um, it should not be like this it's being stuck and this is the whole reason for the rough idle still and everything like that um, I replaced the solenoids as you saw in my previous video but that is not the cause this is the main cause this disavow is completely shot I know this is a BMW part I'm very shocked at that it's the actual original BMW part but it's failed so now as I say I've ordered a new one it needs the new one so what we're going to go and do now is clean all that oil as you can see it's right down there you can see all the oil leaking onto the throttle body from the disavow failure so that's where all the oil is coming from so we need to sort that out immediately and get that cleaned up before we get the new disavow in which will be in tomorrow so let's go and get it cleaned up okay guys so after further testing this is completely shot now what this is meant to do when the car is when you're running the car's at idle this should close and stay shut and then open when you stamp on the throttle body on the throttle body it opens now because it's got a lot of play in it and i'm very surprised usually what happens these pop out here and they get sucked into your intent manifold and you end up hearing them fire out the back of the exhaust <clears throat> but what's happened here is this has been stuck fl flat open now the reason there's all oil in there is because when the ccv is moving oil around in the intake and trying to move it back to the sump through the drain pipe this is meant to remain shut so oil doesn't leak through the system but as you can see, if this is remains open, oil will be passing through, which oil does pass through the intake manifold. It's common, it's meant to happen. It will then leak straight through here into the throttle body, down to the throttle body, into the cylinders, which is what is happening. This is letting oil go through through the CCV, through the intake manifold, straight into the cylinders, because this is remain open, this is meant to shut, and then open when you stump on the gas. And by the time you stump on it, oil won't be there anymore. But when it's on idle, as, as the car's idling, this is staying open like that, while the oil's not moving fast enough, while it's going through the intake manifold, cools in, oil to get through into the valves and obviously onto your pistons which in turn is clogging them up with oil so this is i'm just explaining to you what this causes now because of that reason i have got another one coming as i just said to you i am definitely going to change this i'm glad i took this out this could have been the main common cause of the reason in the whole first place why there was an oil leak but you wouldn't suspect it because like i say these don't really go but obviously if it's had a big oil leak due to the ccv this is what has blown this because it, there's a motor in here you can't repair them like the old ones once they're ruptured you can cut them open and do the repair but it's not worth it it's actually more viable to buy a new one than to do a repair on these um because you have to cut them open and repair all the motor so we have got a new one coming the new one is stuck open when i put it in the car it will and put plugs connected it will go closed as it's meant to do um like i say this should not be like this and this is the whole like i say this is the whole reason now i'm thinking this could be the whole reason for the oil getting into the cylinder in the first place and burning oil because when this is shut oil can pass through in a steady stream with nothing with it not getting into the cylinders because this blocks the cylinders as you see in the, in the intake here it will close it off so oil can't pass through so it will go straight through here this will be sh shut on idle unless you rev it 
and it will just drain back down, as you can see. But what's happened is where this is stuck open, oil is just passing straight through, straight down here, straight into the uh, engine cylinders. As you push on the accelerator, you're just sucking all that oil straight through into the chamber. So I'm just explaining to you what is happening. So if you do have the M52 manifold, obviously this one doesn't have the three stage like my 530i. This one has a single stage, but do you check these. You don't need to even wait for a full code. Don't wait for a full code because believe me, these parts fire off, the pin comes off. You end up with a flap as well coming off into the intake manifold and you don't want that. Searching around for it, it usually falls straight down here. I've seen it all the time. They usually fall in here. They come out here and then just fall straight in there and they rattle around in there and people are wondering what the rattle's coming from. It's usually these, these cause the rattle. As I say, but this part you don't want coming off because it ends up going into your cylinders. They end up cylinders out smashing it with the valves and it just blows it out the back of the exhaust, but it, will end up, that it can end up damaging it. So you don't want that and you don't want to end up looking for it as well if it goes missing because that will cause you even a massive more headache. Okay guys, so everything is now back together. As you can see, the car is now back together perfectly. So obviously I've put the car back together as you can see for now. Um, we're going to leave this parked up. Uh, my missus ain't going to be using it now because the disc is bad. As I say, it's coming tomorrow. So I'm going to refit it. Obviously you guys now know how to refit it. So that's it. The next video you're going to see coming up is I'm now going to be rebuilding their air suspension pump. I've got the kits on the way to rebuild that pump. I'm going to be showing you how to do it. I don't think it does need rebuilding, but I'm going to do it anyway because they run without that hose for so long. I think it's safer than be safer than sorry to rebuild the pump than having to pay £150 for a new pump. And it's only going to be a Chinese one. So we're going to be rebuilding that. Another video you're going to be seeing is that I'm going to be changing the oil level sensor on this just to be sure as well. As you know, it's had an oil problem. But I just want to be absolute 100% certain that this doesn't have an oil problem. I now believe it is the disc valve causing that problem as well as a CCV. Um, I'm not going to, just going to rule out that it was just that on its own. It could have been many things because that had never been changed either. So we have changed everything on the car and now everything's going to be ruled out. But I am going to be changing the oil level since we're going to be redoing another oil change. I'm not going to be changing the filter, of course, because that's just been changed. But I am going to be changing the oil. Obviously, I have to drain the oil to get to the new oil sensor you can't just change the oil sensor without draining the oil those are the next two videos coming up i believe the oil sensor one's going to be first and then the air suspension pump next so thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it shows you how to look for the problems on the disavows on this you do not have to lose a scanner just pull them out and check them if you've got the one in the manifold as i told you in my previous video lift the manifold up and just check it you don't have to take the whole manifold off if you do enjoy this video please like share and subscribe it's bmw dr dean here on Google.